All right, Marcus, your turn. Ask Mel a question. Mel, I know you get tired of talking about these damn quarterbacks, so let me ask you about real football, defense. All right, how do you differentiate between Aiden Hutchinson and Kayfun Thibodeau? Both of these guys are elite, athletic. I know we saw Aiden Hutchinson in big games. That may give him the edge, but what's your separation between both of these guys going into the draft? I think when you look at the comparison to Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, and the production, Marcus, that, that's what kind of separate them. They're every game this year, coming back from the injury, Ohio State game wreaking havoc. Everybody goes to the Georgia game. We had no chance. They got the ball out quick. Ojabo did nothing in that game as well, opposite Hutchinson. But I think the production yeah. and the intensity, game to game, he was a game wrecker. I think that's what separated two at the end of the day going into the draft this year. Yes, sir. Key, your turn. What do you want to ask Mel? Mel, you got one receiver coming off the board at 10 happened to be a USC Trojan. I have no idea why they're shaking their head. Six foot five, 215 pounds, ex-basketball player at Drake London. How will he pair up with Zach Wilson and give them some help if they draft him? Mm. He's what Jack Wilson needs, Key. He's that big receiver, that power forward. He had 16 catches against Utah, 15 against Notre Dame, 13 against Oregon State, eight, 88 catches in eight games until he was injured. So a guy, a big frame, as you said, that power forward, basketball background, catches everybody. I saw him drop one ball in the four games I evaluated, Drake London. I think for, for a guy like Zach Wilson to have Elijah Moore and Braxton Berrios, see with Corey Davis, but to have that big receiver to throw it up to, particularly in the red zone, in the end zone, uh, when those fades, he would be a great weapon for the young quarterback Zach Wilson. I got a little fun fact for you guys. The Jets have used a top 10 pick on a wide receiver just three times in the common draft era. No, okay. The Ooh. last one being none other than Key Ooh. back in 1996. Ooh. Who was that? Oh, it was me. Okay, anyway. Uh, wait, I get a question too. So, Mel, when you mentioned Derek Stingley Jr. earlier, you had him go into the mm -hmm. Falcons, which I think is really interesting. Yep. We didn't see him play, obviously, a whole lot last year, but certainly tons of buzz around this DB. What are you hearing about him? Uh, everybody's all over the place, Laura. It's a great question because Derek Stingley Jr. will be a polarizing player in this draft with opinion saying, okay, in 2019, with Joe Burrow leading the LSU Bayou Bengals to a national title, he looked like a phenomenal mm. lockdown, once-in-a-lifetime type of corner, right? Well, last two years, not a lot going on there. So you have to go back to 2019 to get the best out of Derek Stingley Jr. I think talent wins out to get him in the top ten. But Ahmad Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati mm. will be putting pressure on Stingley to see who, in fact, come late April, April 28th, will be the first cornerback off the board. I think Stingley goes top ten, but watch out for Sauce Gardner and those pro days combine is going to be very important for those two. Yeah, I got to see Sauce Gardner in person uh, in the Cotton Bowl, and man, oh man, he is really, really good, and he looks the part, too. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.